Hi friends, how are you my beautiful people? Welcome on board Joyfido International. Now this has been quite a bit of a time that we came to chat with you. It's It's been, you know, like maybe the last time we had a chat, I did mention I've been very busy engaging myself in so many other things that we as usual benefit both of us all of us that's the whole point of me searching for knowledge um so a lot has been going on but all of them amazingly positive positive things going on so i decided to come today and have a chat with you because i could spare some time out of my daily chores and the exciting thing is um i did some trainings recently the usual ones, personal growth, personal development, what helps us become who we are. And I thought, I'll share that with you. So my name is Joan Fido, and in this video, I'm going to be chatting with you again about who we are, what we can do to contribute to this amazing universe that we live in. So welcome on board. So you know what Joy Fido International represents is about bringing out the best of you. That's that's what my mission is with this aspect of my business to help you see the best in yourself. So I just call it bringing out the best of you. And what's today's topic about? Start contributing to the universe. That's what the topic is about. So now why is this so important to all of us what i find is most of us just sit there and we think we will do absolutely nothing in life and we will get back so much now this is where we're going wrong and that includes me too i'll say includes me because there are times when I completely not because I'm not doing anything because trust me people who know me just know that I cannot sit without doing something but there are times I'm doing things that is just about me and this is what I want all of us to understand in this video there's a movie I watched recently um, Dr. Strange and the interesting thing about the strangers when you look at it with your ordinary eye it is so complicated it doesn't make any sense you you be wondering what is this movie about and then i happen to because again i'm in this creative awareness of who we are because it's one big question i never stop questioning myself remember when we were doing that book the purpose driven life that's me. I'm constantly searching for who we are, why we're here, what we are doing, how can we do it better. So when I see movies that are interesting like this, that is trying to give me meaning. Um, the other one was also The Matrix. That's another interesting movie again, talking about this self-realization. and. Um, there's another one I'll remember it. Lucy. So Lucy, Doctor Strange, The Matrix. These movies push you to a really high level where you have to think. And so what Doctor Strange was bringing on board, um, if you watch that movie, it's about this guy who is an amazing doctor. He was so good at doing his work. And so he became so self-conceited and then he has an accident and he loses that he's, he loses using his hands the way he would have loved to because now his hands were just shaking and he couldn't really you know if you're a doctor you can hold a knife then that's it you've lost it and so now his main purpose was to find out how he could recover his hands so he could continue to be this great doctor that he is and then he delves into something completely strange, which is why he's called Dr. Strange, I guess. And, but I'm not gonna spoil it for you. Go see for yourself. But what 
touched me was when he now got to understand the powers beyond the basic. I call it the powers beyond the ordinary. And he could not do so many things out of his physical reign. And his master was now telling him, I see your future and it's so full of amazing things. And but he said to her, but could I still be able to, you know, um, work with my hands and do my amazing work? And the lady said, yes, you can. And he said, that's all I want to do. And she said to him, that's where you're getting it wrong. It's not about you. That was the statement. It's not about you. That's a mistake we all make in life. We think it's all about us. And you know what we then do? We constantly chasing just to earn money so we can build amazing houses. If you're African like me, we just want to buy, buy, buy every piece of land we can find and build all the houses and that makes us amazing. And then everyone will be worshiping us. They go, look, do you know how rich he or she is? She has so much property all over the place. Or it could be, I can buy all the cars in the world and typical Nigerians, you want to park 50 cars in front of your house and let people say, wow, have you seen his house? He has all the cars you can think about. Or in some cases, like the men, they marry all the wives they could find and have so many wives and, and the list goes on. So you own all these cars, you own all these houses, you, you could buy food that will feed you 24-7. You know that story in the Bible where, I can't remember the exact passage, but this rich man was so rich and he was just eating and drinking and this night he ate and drank and said, Oh, he has so much to eat and drink, he doesn't even know what to do with it. My soul, eat and drink and be merry. That was him. And that very night, the Spirit of God came and said, Tonight, I'm taking back your life. So all these messages I'm giving you is for you to understand that this life is not about you and it's not about me. That's Dr. Strange. It's not about you. So the, 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 the mentor then told him that this is where your weakness is. Because you're always thinking about yourself. And that's what has stopped you from greatness. That was the biggest eye-opener in my life. Seriously. Because it was, you know, when they say light bulb, it was like a huge light bulb. Boom! That's what has stopped you from greatness because you're always thinking about yourself. You have so much potential for more. That's what she told him. And that's a message to all of us. So one thing I'm going to really, really nice snippet I'll give you is when you watch a movie, don't just watch the actors and the actress and all the amazing things they do. Because this is one thing we also need to learn. The Spirit of God touches all of us in different forms. And so when people are creating movies, the state they're in is not the basic state. So when an idea hits them to put it in a movie form, that's God touching them to touch us. It's the same thing with the musician who's singing this amazing song. It's also God's way of touching us. And so it's the same thing that I'm trying to do here. When I'm here chatting with you, it's not me, it's the Spirit of God using my voice to speak with you. So that's how the whole world touches each other. And that's a big message. What is your contribution to life? Because we are spirits that God is coming through all of us. And all of us are different. One of the trainings I just came from, which I was telling you about is, Something this man said that really touched me again is, why are we struggling so hard? Why are we all struggling so hard to fit in? When we were meant to stand out. That was another statement that hit me. Because just like the Matrix, that movie, that's the same thing. 
The system wants to build you to be like the next person and the next person and the next person. It's the same thing when we go to school. You go into a classroom and what happens, they teach us all the same thing and they want to drill this into your head. So you come out to be like the next one and the next, we all become one person. And then my question is when we go applying for jobs, which is the whole purpose of going to school because that's the whole, that's where it leads to. They don't, they don't train you to come out and be your own person and be unique. No, universities train you or schools train you to all come and learn maths, all come and learn English, all come and learn. So all of us are learning the same thing and the whole idea you come out, you look like one. So my question now is when we finish and we all apply for a job, let's say 20 of us went to this job applied, which these days you hear when people apply for jobs, you're hearing thousands. Oh, they want to find people, but 50,000 people applied. So 50,000 people applied for this job. Now you made this job so hard for this recruitment people or this personnel department. How do they differentiate you from the other person? If all you know are the same. That's what the matrix is talking about. The system insists we should all look the same. And so the minute you try to look different, they penalize you, they pull you out, they break you. And so that's what it is. We need to start finding out our individuality. We need to start finding out our uniqueness. And my good examples are, you look at your iris, it's not the same as the next person. You look at your finger, you know, thumbprint, it's not the same as the next person. That's what your signature tone is. And so we need to, like that amazing person said, and the hiring team, that was the course I went for. Do not try to fit in because you were made to stand out. And that's one of the things I'm beginning to chat with my children now. My children are growing up. They are becoming young adults. And I'm constantly reminding them. In my family, again, I've been so blessed by God that I have unique, amazing skills in my children. There's the one who is amazing with cooking. There's the one who does amazing makeup. There's one who loves beauty, so anything to do with your health, massage, eyelash, individual eyelash. You know, so I'm encouraging each of these skills to come out. Because it's not just about that academic education that's going to make them this unique person that they are. And that's the message I'm bringing to you today too. So I want you to be able to contribute you to the universe. Because you know the beauty about the universe. The universe is such that if you want something out of this universe, you know we talked about we find ourselves here and why are we here and what are we doing here. Now my bigger understanding about the universe as I've been searching is, you know how God created all of us in his image? So. What's happening here is each of us is a different piece of God. Each of us is a different part of God. And that's why he's given us each unique messages. I mean, I can sit here and chat with you for as long as how I can or I feel like. And there are people who don't even want to see a camera. They break down. So we're just different pieces of God. So he's empowered us with different unique things. And what, what really differentiates one person from the other? Again, from my constant search, is our mindset. Is our mindset. So I want to start working with your mindset going forward. Because once you, can, once you can change the way you see things, once you can change the way you understand things, you're going to find that you're... You, all that thing is already in you. You are the one stopping yourself from giving something to the universe. So we're talking about universe. Universe is not going to throw things at you when you're sitting down in your kitchen doing nothing. Or you're lying down on your bed just sleeping. Because this is a big one again with young people. 
They're beginning to grow up thinking the world owes them. Yes, yeah, some people will want to blame us parents and say, yes, you you cutting wool. That's what they call them. They call them cutting wool, fed our children, and whatever you want to call it, because we wrapped them so, so, so amazingly because they're so, they're so precious. Don't touch anything. Don't break anything. Just sit down there and do nothing. And this is a mistake we do as parents when we do this. And then our children actually go out there to meet the real world. The real world does not know. The real world does not imagine that your child is so precious. The real world just sees a human being and has expectations of that human being. So if you haven't been training this human being from home to understand a knife will, will, will cut a finger if you don't use it properly, to understand that when you're cooking you will have to put salt, you have to put um, pepper and you have to put this and this child knows nothing and this child goes out there, this child is going to be absolutely useless. And so this is where we need to start setting in understanding into our children because they are the next generation so that's part of what i'm going to be doing with you i want to start working with your mind so you start changing the things you're seeing because i've taken time to understand what's the difference between black and white tall and short big and skinny and you know why i'm saying all this because these are the things we hide under all of us the only reason I'm not achieving is because I'm black. The only reason I'm not achieving is because I'm short. The only reason I'm not achieving is because I'm fat. So we hide on that. I call them excuses. And all the people who've been doing personal development, they throw it at us. We need to wake up from that. Because once you can begin to see things in a better light, your life changes. And that's a big message here. So when you sit back, do nothing, you get nothing from the universe. That's as simple as it is. The God that created all of us and gave us something to come and bring to the world. So remember how the story is going. God created us in his image. And you know how we say it? Even before he created us, he knew what he wanted to do with us. So you come out here. And then you forget the bigger message. We forget the bigger message because all we are thinking about is how do I compete with my friends? How do I look better than them? How do I own the biggest cars and the biggest homes and I feel so good about myself? And then we forget who we are. So that's what we shouldn't be doing. We shouldn't forget that we have a bigger mission and the bigger mission is to project our creator project that thing that he's given us to establish to the world to give it to the world so what is your contribution because until you contribute something the universe will not give you anything back and you remember when i said even i get into that trap sometimes because i tend to forget that oh you know i should actually be doing something to touch lives this is the big secret. You hear secret all the time, no. The secret is, for as long as what you are doing is not touching another person's life, you're not gonna get anything back. And I know maybe one of the videos I've explained, the money you are looking for, for those of us who are desperate to, to get money and amass all this wealth, your money is in your client's hand. Your client is holding your money. So like in my case, I work with hair. Until I have braided your hair or put a, a hair extensions in your head or, you know, a, a blow dry your hair or do something with your hair, you're not going to hand me money. Or until you've sat with me and I've trained you with skills that give you the power to braid hair, you're not going to throw money in my face. Do, do you get what I'm saying? So this is where the message is. Until you do something that touches somebody else. In other words, until you give somebody else value. So what is value? If this person wants something and you give them that thing in return, they will give you.
do something too. Remember, you may not know, but there was a time they called it trade by butter. And apparently, we can actually live without money, the physical exchange of cash. Because if you have a skill that I want so badly, give example, you know, an electrician or a plumber. So I have a problem with my tap in the kitchen. I can't fix it because I don't have the skill. And I get a plumber to come and fix it. I could say to the plumber, you know, I'm very good with hair. Does your wife want her hair done? Oh yeah, no problem. And so we exchange the skills. So the wife comes, I do her hair because the plumber has just fixed my top. So that's a, an easier way to explain it. Until you give somebody value, you're not going to get anything back. So this is a bigger message for us to understand that we need to give something to the universe. When we say universe, that's you giving something to somebody. Because when you give out, you get paid back. The more you give out, the more lives you touch, the more return you receive. So that's why you have to find your contribution. Find that thing in you that can, that can come out and people will love and appreciate. And, and, and the other part of the story is don't, don't think that when you do this, when you're giving and giving, that everybody's going to love it. No, I have experienced that. Because obviously if you watch me on YouTube over the years I've been doing it, you get the ones who find everything I do annoying. And then I used to get really confused. But now I know. Apparently this is just nature's way of stabilizing us. Of bringing balance to our lives. Because there are times there are people who will love you and there are people who will hate you. And it's just about balance. And, and the other one, because there's so many things that tend to stop us. The other one is also because we're thinking that we've had problems. I realize that problems are actually your best friends. I've just realized that. You know, but, but probably another day I'll do a video on that. But there's, there's positive and negative. Can you believe that? And I'll tell you what. So many of us started from really, really, really lowly backgrounds. Where you would have thought that, are you serious with all these problems you were able to pull through? Now these things come to test you. If you've heard that saying, um, you know, uh, uh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, that is it. And another analogy I, I, I realized with myself was, you know, in the human body we got what they call the white blood cells that does all the fight for us. When our body takes in toxins and viruses and all kinds of things happen to us, who do you think is curing you? You may go to the doctor and they give you some medicine. Sometimes they call them placebo. Because let your mind tell you that you've drank something. And I, I can laugh about this, but my dad was a medical doctor. And I remember then as a kid, he did tell us once, it was funny, he said, when all these people come, because obviously we grew up in Nigeria, complete local, local setting. And, um, and not all the time did they equip him with all the medication he would have wanted to have in the dispensary. So what he then used to do, sometimes when they give him so much grief, when they come and I have had like he just gives them this tablet. And my tummy aches, he gives the same tablet. So he's like, when they come, I just give them the same tablet. But you see, the thing is because you have seen a doctor and he's given you a tablet, you feel good. And so that's what it is. So our human body will attack whatever comes to try and destabilize us. And so when we have these negative experiences in life and we think, oh my God, this is the reason I cannot continue. It's actually meant to strengthen you. Because it's nature's way of saying, I want to prepare you for bigger things to come. Because if you're this weak with this, what will make you strong enough to wait for the bigger things that will come in front? 
you know there's another thing i always hear that we want to be millionaires all of us want to be millionaires but are we strong enough to take on a millionaire's role in life i said you know how did they say to him that wears the crown comes bigger problems or the head that wears the crown has to deal with a lot that's that's basically the message so if you know you want a lot of money equally be strong to face the problems that come to achieve that kind of money because they don't just come on a platter so you have to be strong enough to throw things out that can also balance you ready for what comes in so whatever it is you're dealing with in life you have to be strong enough to deal with it to face it so when all this you know I, I like to call them huddles you know when they're running on the 200 huddles 200 meters huddles and so you run a bit and you jump over something you run a bit and you jump over something that's what life is all these complications this one cost me that and that one cost me trust me i have my own baggage in that kind of sense i've had issues growing up and all the huddles i came across and sometimes when i look back at my i look at myself and i said i cannot believe i i overcame all of that so yes bad things do happen but bad things happen as a way of stabilizing us and making us stronger and so overcome them and pull you out pull that person in you out that person that God created to bring a message to the world and I like to call us me um, I call them I call us messengers we're messengers of God because God is not coming here physically to deal with the world anymore so his way of doing it is to pass us to pass through us who are equally spirit but in human form and there's another instance that really gets me thinking you know when jesus was i think he was only 12 years old and his parents took him i think to jerusalem and he had to go and preach to these pharisees and you know the story in the Bible and the parents were looking for him all over they didn't see but what happened I think they started going home and halfway they realized he wasn't with them oh my gosh 12 year old so they rushed back and they, and they saw him very last preaching to and the mother was like son you put us through all this trouble why I said I'm here to do my father's will statement touches me I am here to do my father's will that's a message for all of us because it, the interesting thing is you know my one of my daughter came to me that mom I really want to read the Bible now and understand better I said yes it's a great thing to do but I'll give you a little tip read more of personal development books you know why they touch your direct life right now and then once you understand them a bit better and then you read the Bible, it makes more sense. Because we all grew up with the Bible, but we still struggled. Now, now that I understand personal development in so many ways, hearing a statement like, I am here to do my father's will, gets the message across. Because now I know that I'm not here just for my sake. Now I know that that was a huge statement from God to us in the Bible. But we could not understand it because we just read it with the basic eyes. I'm here to do my... And we thought it was a story. Oh, and then Jesus went and then the mother came. And you know, and so we're just reading and, and going with the flow of storytelling. But we're not picking meanings out of it. You see, you see what I'm saying? Like with Dr. Strange, it's not about you. Jesus, I'm here to do my father's will. So can you connect these statements? Because what we tend to do, we allow things to boggle us down. We're either being boggled down by our family, by our relatives, by our friends, by our wives, by our husbands. And so we forget the bigger picture, which is the mission that we're here for, to do our father's will. It's not about you. 
is about the message you bring to the world hence messengers of god and so in the in it, it, it doesn't mean that in all of this you can have fun and be happy and bring your individuality if you love flashy clothes if you love um, long hair silky hair wavy hair curly hair if you love perfume if you love high issues this is nothing to do with that in the process of doing your father's will your uniqueness will still shine out doesn't mean you should close the doors and and, and and close the world away because you're here to do your father's will and that's what you're going to find with most people again I always like to take us back to Nigeria because we Nigerians are like that when we say we want to worship God here we think it's about just singing and praising which is a good thing to do to God and then we forget to contribute to his world you see where the difference is we don't contribute. Our form of contribution is to go and put it in the pastor's hand in church. And so from what I'm hearing, they go to church, they go even with the um, um, credit card machine. And then they tell them, just put it through, just put it through. What's your PIN number? Put it through. And so this person takes the money of this most ordinary woman and then goes to build expensive secondary schools that this woman's child cannot even attend because the school fees is ridiculous but all her savings has gone into that church the church is not contributing to her welfare and so poor woman now thinks that that's her way of contributing to God's world by just giving money to the pastor but no we each have something to give to God and when I say give to God to his universe which is this world that he created for us so that's why we're here to contribute a little bit that he's put in each of us and then the journey is done and then you go back it's not about you just sitting down here do nothing and go back empty-handed because it'll be better if you get back and you say you know like the story of the talent master you gave me five talents I doubled it and I achieved ten talents no master you gave me one talent and I dug the ground and I put it in and then now you're back here's your talent that's not what God wants from us he wants each of us to contribute so in what form can you contribute to God's world that's the big message I'm bringing to you that's the question I'm asking you today because what separates me and you from the rest of the people who are doing great is their contribution to the world so you need to sit down after hearing this video and please share this video with your friends. Please share it. Please give it a thumbs up. We love when you tell us that we're doing great because then that way we'll do more. So remember to share this and let everyone in your circle, if each of you in your community all come up with something. So you doing hair, the other one is cooking food, the other one is taking the pictures, the other one is doing the videos. The other one is going to the farm and planting some crops so that at the end of the season there will be food on the table. Do you see how we are all contributing? When we all contribute, we create a better world. And the one thing I would want us to please pick up, please pick this up. You know how we offer training here on hair? And I know people will call and they will talk and say, but it's too expensive. It's too expensive. This is where the problem is. And this is one of the things holding us back. We are not willing to learn. We're not willing to learn. And one of the big questions I had this weekend coming from this training was, if we think the price of education or the price of knowledge is too expensive what is the price of ignorance or lack of knowledge because that would just put me to another level of discussion probably i should wait till another day because you see even the bible tells us that my people suffer 
for lack of knowledge. That's what's been killing us. Lack of knowledge. And you know where we're wrong? We think knowledge is too expensive. Go and read that passage again. I think it's Hosea 4 6. I'm not so sure. Because there's two passages in the Bible that I love so much. There's Hosea 4 6 and there's Proverbs 6 4. It, it's, it just inter, interweaves. And it says, though it will cost you a lot, but the first thing you is about seeking knowledge. The first thing that was King Solomon. First thing you should do is seek knowledge. And then on the other hand, my people suffer from lack of knowledge. Do you see how it's connected? Though it will cost you a lot, seek knowledge first. So if the question now is, oh knowledge is so expensive, I don't need it. What is the price of ignorance? What is the price of lack of knowledge? It just goes to show that when you lack knowledge, your whole life is messed up. That's what I'm saying. We'll have a whole time we'll talk about it. Because you know why? What you don't know is bigger than you. So the first thing I want you to do is seek knowledge in whatever you think you want to learn or you want to contribute to the world. Yes, you will have the natural flair for it. Like my young son, he has a natural flair for athletics. He has a natural flair for football. He has a natural flair. But when you have, like the Chinese do, once they see their children with a natural flair for something, they encourage that child to go and learn that thing. And that's why you see them, by the time they're getting to Olympics, a 15-year-old is winning gold in swimming. And you think, where did that child learn how to do that? Because they make that habit, that hobby, second nature. So if there's anything you have a flair for, anything you see your child with a flair for, encourage that thing. And allow that child to learn that thing. And you equally go and learn that thing. That's how it was for me with hair. I had a natural flair for hair. And when things had turned upside down for me, and I felt, you know what? Instead of sitting and do nothing and let my children starve, I will go and perfect understanding hair. And I paid the money for it. I paid the price for it. Everything in life is something they call sacrifice. You must give something to get something. And so go and perfect whatever it is that you have a natural flair for. And once you know that thing, that becomes your contribution to the world. You then start to give that thing out more and more. And the more you give out, the more lives you touch, the more nature pays you back. So that's a big message today. Give out so you can receive. Contribute to nature because nature will bless you once it sees your effort. Okay, so I'm going to stop here today and thank you so much for listening to this talk. And like I said, Give us a thumbs up, share this with your friends, and remember to subscribe because trust me, there's so much coming your way. There's so much. I mean, with my understanding now, it took me time to get here, but I have a lot in stock for you. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and God bless you continuously as always.